the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Back to your program, Treasures, and we are continuing commenting on the first letter of Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 11. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. If you are following the commentaries on this letter, you can see clearly that he is like ending all the chapters with the good news of the second coming of Christ. That's very special to this letter. The five chapters end with the same message. Christ is coming and Christ will come to reward his people. And you should stay strong in your faith and hope and waiting for this second coming. So always you can see that the last verse in the five chapters were the same in meaning. Again, this last verse in chapter 3, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So he's praying for them praying for himself in order to see them soon. And he's praying for them so that God will fill their hearts with more love, with more faith, in order to be ready to be holy before the eyes of God in his second coming. Again, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. And also he's mentioning that the second coming of Christ, he will come with his saints. The saint, the angel, the holy angels will come with the Lord and all the saints who, you know, were buried will rise again to celebrate the second coming of Christ and we will all meet together on the clouds in order to go with the Lord to the kingdom of heaven and to stay happily there forever. Chapter 4. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. So again, in order to help them to grow in spirit, he is telling them you need to work hard, you need to stay strong, you need to push yourself more and more in praying, in loving people, in staying away from any sin. So we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Focus on pleading God. Focus on walking worthy to the grace of God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. This means that he gave them many commandments. He preached before this letter many times. He stayed with these people for many months and he taught them how to live in Christ. So what is he mentioning now in the letter was not new for them. Again, he's saying for you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. And this verse is very important because he made it in very simple and concise way. The will of God is your sanctification. So God will to make all his followers holy, sanctified in his name, Christ-like people, uh, in full grace of God. Again, this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. So starting this holy life, at least you should stop any sexual immorality. You have to 
stay away from any sexual uh, immorality because at that time it was very common in these cities that people are living in adultery, in homosexuality, in many bad habits. So he is starting this holy life with this, you know, avoiding any sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. To keep your vessel, meaning, you know, to keep your heart, to keep your body, to keep your life pure. And also the vessel, some of the early fathers of the church, you know, made it like to keep the family life or your partner, the wife and husband pure. Their life is very pure. They keep the bond of marriage in a holy way. So they stay away from any kind of adultery. Each of you should know how to possess his own vessel. Your body is like a vessel and now this vessel was filled with the Holy Spirit. So you should respect your vessel and also the vessel of your wife. Now she the altar of the Holy Spirit. You should respect the vessel and together you should live a holy life. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. So they were living in a lustful environment. The people lived, lived around them were full of lust. So he is, you know, warning them to stay against, away from this teaching that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. So you have to love people and to respect them. So hurting anyone in a physical way or sexual way is totally against the teaching of the Lord, is totally against the love of God. And if you love people, you should respect them and deal with them in a very pure and respectful way. Because the Lord is the avenger of all, such as we also forewarned you and testified. So he is telling them, please do not follow what people doing around you because they still live in, the, in a very lustful environment. They are taking advantage of each other. They are abusing people in a physical or sexual way and God is the avenger against all these bad deeds. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. So, if you hurt anyone in any way, especially physical way, you are hurting God himself, because God is the father of everyone. And he created everyone on his image. So by destroying the image of God, by hurting the image of God, now you stand like an enemy against God. And God is the real avenger against this. Who rejects this does not reject man. So if you reject, you know, the image of God in man, if you disrespect any man, if you abuse any man in any way, now you are disrespecting God himself and you will be condemned one day. Who has also given us his Holy Spirit. That's another important point in order to help you to respect people. Look up to the people around you because these people were not only created on the image of God, but also became the vessel of the Holy Spirit. So how can you touch them in a bad way? So this chapter started by the behavior. If you follow the chapters, now you can see the applications. And he never ignored that they were, lived, were living in an immortal environment. Immorality, I mean. And he is, you know, busy with this to teach them how to stay away from these bad things and to fight for their pure life and their wholeness. 
But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourself are taught by God to love one another. So, staying away from sinful life, that's the start of sanctification, but we have to grow up to love everyone in a practical way, not only to hurt people, but to love them positively. Concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourself are taught by God to love one another. And indeed you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. So he is repeating the commandment of love each other, but also he is encouraging them that they already doing this with the people of Macedonia living around. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. So there is no end for the love commandment. When you love people, you can love them more. When you show love, you may express your love in different ways. And love never fails. Love never ends. So work hard on this commandment more and more. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Some of the people in the early church, because of the news of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the life on earth, so some of these believers started to stop working and to just wait for the second coming and they became burden on the church and on their families. So he is stating here, no, you have to work, you have to cover your needs, and you have to wait God, but you know, in order to love people, don't be a burden on anyone. We urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. So being good Christian does not mean that you stop working in, in this life. You have to work and, you know, uh, to work with your own hands to cover your family needs. That you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. Because if somebody is not working or doing any good thing, you know, people from the outside of the church may look down to these people, may not respect them, because usually even the natural people who are still not believers, still they respect work and they respect those who are working to cover the needs of their families. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brother, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Now it's a different story because with the idea of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, many questions arise. Some people, you know, felt so bad that some of the believers, you know, died. And they had questions. Why these people, you know, will not attend the celebration of Christ's coming of the cloud? And when they died, you know, they have many questions concerning their faith. What will happen later on? Although they are Christian, but being in the early church and very simple Christians, so many of the questions were there in their mind. So he will, he will answer some of these questions related to the death of the believers. Concerning those who have fallen asleep, so he is not saying died, he is saying fallen asleep. That's the common um, beautiful word to express the death. Because nowadays as Christians we do not believe in death, but we believe that for those believers who die, they just felt asleep, fall asleep. Lest you sorrow at others who have no hope. We still have hope for those who fall in asleep. And for us, we all have hope. And for those who died, they will rise up again to see Christ coming on the cloud. And for us, if we still living and Christ came any time, we will see him and we will have this new life in order to go to the kingdom of heaven with him. 
Again, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow at the others who have no hope. So we, if we feel sorry for those who have fallen asleep, we still have hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. So as far as we believe that Christ died and rose again, we believe, in, we believe in the resurrection of everyone. So for those who have fallen asleep, they will rise up again and we will see each other again. So we believe in eternal life for all the believers. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So some of the people believe that we living on earth, if Christ come any time, we will see him first, we will glorify him first, we have the advantage of being living till the minute of his coming. Actually, there is no advantage here because for everyone, everyone will see Christ in his second coming. And no one can say that because I'm still living, so I have an advantage over anyone who fallen asleep before. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. So he is now telling us what will happen in the last day. Because many people, you know, at that time couldn't imagine the details of the last day, of the condemnation day, of the resurrection day. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. So the archangel angel will come with the trumpet and everyone will listen to this, will hear the voice of the trumpet. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So the first step that all the dead in Christ, the believers, will rise up to celebrate his second coming and to enjoy the start of his kingdom. Then we, we, the believers who are still living at that minute, who are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So... The Lord Christ is coming on the clouds with the holy angels. All the believers who died before will rise up to see him. And all the believers who are still there on earth, remaining in their life, will change to have the new life. And everyone will go up to be caught up on the clouds with the Lord. So this idea of you know, this quoting up is in the last day. It's not before this minute. It's not in any day before the judgmental day. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. So in order to comfort those who lost one of their relatives, he was a believer, a good man, but he died they saw that they had an advantage of living to see Christ and this guy, you know, who fall asleep will not see him. But with the good news, no, everyone will enjoy seeing the Lord in his glory coming on the last day and all the dead people will enjoy the resurrection in the new, you know, glorified bodies. And we, if we still live, we will have this glorified body kind of miraculous change happening in the same minute and we will all be caught up to the heaven in the clouds. Glory to God. Amen.